very um at the very beginning that we have some more information um coming out about julie roy's um that i'm hoping to have uh, out to you by by monday but suffice it to say um it's going to blow um blow up the facade of julie roy's as an ethical investigative journalist uh we have some some information about some some very unethical i would say immoral but certainly unethical um things that julie royce has been caught uh saying and doing and promoting that we're going to be um really we're, we're going to be releasing this information hopefully by monday so stay tuned to uh protestia.com for that information uh, i want to thank you all uh, again for joining me tonight on this live stream Welcome, welcome, welcome to the BCV channel. I am your host, Pastor Seiko Woods. Please do the following. Please like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell at the bottom of this video. That way, whenever I go live or post any content or information for you, the viewer, you'll be one of the first to view it. Also, if you'd like to support this ministry financially, first and foremost, thank you. Those of you who have been so gracious and faithful and consistent in supporting this ministry, we do thank you so much uh, for that. Um, just want to continue to thank you all for that. It, it is very helpful to help us to do what we're called to do. It is definitely a, uh, a blessing to see the body of Christ to come alongside and to support uh, ministries like the BCV channel and Love Life and Master of the Woods. Uh, but if you'd like to continue to do so, you can click the donation link below at the bottom of the video. Uh, we have Venmo, Cash App, and also Zelle. Uh, those of you who have been using Super Chat, we would, would like to encourage you, if you can, if not, don't worry about it. That's fine. We'll, we'll get it when we get it. Uh, but uh, we've been encouraging our viewers and supporters to, uh, to utilize the three uh, donation links below because that way we were able to receive the, the, the funds and resources in a timely manner uh, expeditiously. And it would help expedite the process and help us to cut down on costs uh, versus if you use the Super Chat. We won't receive those funds until the following month. And so, of course, you know how it, how things go. It takes uh, it takes money to do ministry. And so we do appreciate that. Uh, but we thank you nonetheless. Uh, those who would like to be a body lifer, body lifer are those with no obligation, a uh, body lifer are those who like to support this ministry, would like to make uh, the BCV channel and Love Life and Marriage with the Woods a part of their regular support, their regular uh, giving to ministries such as hours and so there's no obligation you can start you can stop anytime you can give anytime whenever you want uh, we do thank you so much for that and actually uh, i just want to get give give again personal shout outs to those of you who have been supporting us I, again i cannot stress that enough i cannot stress that enough contrary to what some people may think you know people like uh david morrow he's in he's in the uh in the chat i definitely tagged him i tagged protestia because this live is especially for them this one has their name on it all right and so he calls me a grifter. Can you believe it? Me, yours truly. He calls me a grifter. He doesn't think I have a real job. <laughs> Keyword is content creator. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I create content. This is my job. This is my ministry. This is my calling. But he came up in the chat trying to run his mouth like diarrhea. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, somebody get that, get that man some uh, Pepto-Bismol or some uh, immorial AD instead of immonium AD. Give him some immoral AD. He's already, he's already immoral. I mean, he has no morals at all. We, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. But nonetheless, um, thank you, those of you who have been supporting this channel. We do thank you for that. Also, if you'd like to support the ministry, you can do it by also uh, going to the BCV store. Uh, you can go to the BCV store. You can click our link there below at the bottom of the video in the video description, and you can support the ministry by purchasing any of the items that are there online. We do thank you so much for that. Moderators, thank you for holding it down. Definitely going to probably need you uh, to handle your business because you do know that uh, people like, you know, the morals, uh, the mob, and, and others, they're going to try to, you know, stir up confusion. We already know we don't put up with that over here. We'll put you out. Simple as that. You can't comport yourself accordingly. Can't handle your business. Be respectful. I already told him to cam up. He didn't want to cam up. So maybe he'll have another opportunity. He told me in the email, and I'll share all the email conversations. There was one that I was not able to populate, David, but I'll read it. Remind me, Dave, because I know you're watching. 
I'll read the email that you sent me before I went live and I'll definitely uh, relay that to the viewing audience because again, I want everything to be in context unlike you and others, all right? So uh, let's get this party started, y'all. Facebook family, welcome. YouTube family, welcome. Moderators, welcome. Everybody, thank y'all for joining. Uh, new viewers, thank you for joining. Let's get this party started, all right? Listen, so I uh, was doing some thinking, because that's what I do, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I remember the conversation, uh, actually not the conversation, the video on yesterday, and I played it in the, in the um, matter of fact, I didn't play it in the introduction, I played it in a minute, um, regarding David Morrow, and he was with the... He was a guest on the mob, you know, uh, dear woke Christian and all them, all them people, uh, you know, the ones that uh, basically says I'm in sin, but they don't want to come up and, and prove that I'm in sin. But I've been telling them, let's come up. I, I have no problem coming up with them, but they're running. I don't know why they want to run. I'm not going to beat them down. I'm not going to take, you know, uh, dear woke Christians Twinkies from them. You know, I'm just going to basically, you know, just have a conversation, debate them, beat them with the facts and leave them bleeding, virtually speaking. Let them bleed out of their own foolishness, virtually speaking, because they've been they've been causing confusion and raising the records for so long. And then they have people that doesn't that don't know what they're talking about. But of course, when you hate truth and when you are an idolater and you cape for a man that is John MacArthur, who supports and finances child abusers and sex offenders and pedophiles and white beaters. What else do you expect? What else do you expect? So anyway. Let's begin with some verses, okay? Because I want to lay down the foundation. Um, you have people like David Morrow who are liars. They're liars. They, they'll, they'll say that Julie Royce and, and myself and others who defend truth and who stand up for, the, uh, for those who can't defend themselves. And, and you're going to, listen, I'm not making this up. I can't, listen, I couldn't make this stuff up if I was Tyler Perry writing the script myself. You're going to see this man in his own words in writing, in black and white, minimize people like Eileen Gray and others who have been abused and survived abuse. You're going to see it with your own eyeballs. Trust me. Which makes me wonder, Corey, this is the people that you were talking about that have the other side of the story that you didn't want to tell me who their names were, which I kind of already knew who they were, bro. This is who you're writing with? All right, well, it is what it is. But check this out. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. The Bible says, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal faithfully are his delight. Lying lips, liars. 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 They're known to lie. I mean, if, if, if protesting is your standard and your source of information, you do better going to CNN. You do better going to MSNBC. You do better going to the mainstream, lamestream media to get your news, to get your information. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling you. <laughs> These people, if 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 Protestia is your source of info, your resource on where you get truth from, God help you in your discernment. God help you and your discernment. I, 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 I mean, listen, I, I'm not even lying to you. God help you. Because he's the only one who can. Because your discernment is trash. These people are unreliable. And you don't take my word for this. Just, just look at their own content. <laughs> exactly, David Rector. They won't even cover up the abuse from, from Grace Community Church. Because they know where, they're, where, they, they know where they're, their bread is buttered at. And this, and this clown going to send me links <laughs> that he wrote trying to refute Julie Royce, who's a professional journalist. Hey, dude, have a seat, bro. Have a seat. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. He who walks with, the, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Yeah, these people, this verse fits them perfectly. But the companion of fools will suffer harm. Chapter 26 of Proverbs, verse 28. 
A lying tongue hates those it crushes. A lying tongue hates those it, it crushes. You, you, y'all think, do y'all think Protestia loves Julie Royce? Y'all, y'all think, y'all think Protestia has love for Julie Royce, has love for me, has love for those who defend the abused? You'll see for yourself that they don't when I drop these receipts in just a moment. You're going to see for yourself in just a moment. They have no love for people like Julie Royce, myself, and even those of you who have been fighting and standing for those who cannot defend themselves. They will, they will tell you that they do, but they don't. April Chapman don't love the body of Christ. Dear World Christian don't love the body of Christ. Ricky Carlwood don't love the body of Christ. Ricky Gantz don't love the body of Christ. Proverbial Life doesn't love the body of Christ. <laughs> k Up Truth don't love the body of Christ. These people don't love the word of God. They don't love the body of Christ. Because look, look at what they do. Look at how they show it. You would think, yes, this did. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute too, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, sir. I'm glad you brought that up, bro. Any teen suicide this year based on your bullying? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're we going to talk about that in, in, in just a moment. <laughs> yeah, let's do let's do let's do some uh some self deleting updates and see if there is see if there are any. Yeah, these people are are your are, are who you run with. <laughs> okay, but anyway, anyway, any way. So those are the verses I wanted I wanted us to look at. Um, because and I got I got a couple more, but I just wanted to just 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 touch on one on one thing for a second. I want us never to forget how all of this stuff started, okay? This this whole ordeal didn't start with me, didn't start with Julie Royce. It started with those who defend people like John MacArthur, who is who are who is an unrepentant sin right now as we speak. And and listen, I'm telling you when I drop these receipts of David No Moral and JD Hall. You're going to hear out of their own mouths what they think about people who've been abused or what they think about cases, abuse cases in churches like Grace Community Church. Don't take my word for it. I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to be a Berean, but you're going to hear it. You're going to hear it out of their own mouth in your ears. How these people feel. These weak, sorry excuse for men feel about those who have been abused trust me and what they say if it doesn't piss you off i don't know what else will because they're going to tell you exactly how they feel about abuse survivors abuse victims and how long they believe you know hey 20 years they call those cold cases <laughs> i'm not lying to y'all listen to me they called the case of Eileen Gray a cold case. Y'all know what a cold case is. Matter of fact, the, Proverbs, can you tell the audience what a cold case means? Can you can you tell us, can you can you enlighten us as a people, the viewers, what a cold case means? Because that is what J.D. Hall <laughs> and David No Moral have pinned. And have phrased the abuse regarding Eileen Gray and others. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want I want you to I want you to I want you to give the definition of that Proverbs because <laughs> you being in law enforcement, you you know, you 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 know a little bit about these things more than us. But that's what it called the the abuse of, of Eileen Gray. And I said, wow, these, these people are wicked. But they have the nerve, the temerity, the audacity to call Julie Royce a wicked woman. I, I know, ain't it something, ain't, ain't it something right, Miss? Crazy how non crazy how non-believers will defend abused victims over believers defending John MacArthur. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Listen, you heard what I said, Isaac. You heard what I said? You heard me? Yeah. 
A cold case is an old unsolved crime. Well, apparently the crime has been solved because David Gray is in prison for life. That's right, Nikki. April Chapman knew, knows me. My family personally goes to show just how much people will shoot you down over their idols. Yep. And I tried to help her, tried to warn her, and she flipped and she turned and tried to stab us in the back. Yep, sure did. Sure did. But anyway, anyway, um, yeah, you would think, right, AT? If it's a supposed cold case, <laughs> exactly. If, if it is a supposed cold case, then it would make more of our point that it needs to be dealt with, right? Exactly. Because we are, as Christians, we want justice. The Bible tells us we're to pursue justice. Not social justice, but biblical justice. And this is a social justice issue. Which probably is the reason why they did sign that declaration against social justice. But anyway, that's another topic another time. That's another topic for another time. No problem. No problem. Let's let's just continue on. Let's just continue on. Yeah, later. Later, Kurt W. Peace. Glad to see you. Um, but let's look at some more scriptures. First Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Mm -hmm. Who you run with? Who you associate with? Yeah. Revelation chapter 21. Verse 8, the Bible says, verse 8, notice, but for the cowardly and the unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. You see that? There, there's a there's a there's a little smorgasbord of sins in here. But notice the first sin is the cowardly, those who won't stand up, those who are afraid, those who have fear of man and fear of man rules their life. God says, if you're a coward, you're not saved. You're going to hell. You will experience the second death. Hades is just a holding tank. Hell is just a holding tank. The lake of fire is where you will spend eternity if being a coward is who you are. The unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, immoral persons, sorcerers, idolaters, you know, MacArthurites, fanboys, People like Bible thumping wingnut and others. Yeah. And all liars, Protestia, David, no moral, JD Hall. Yeah. I would wonder that too. I would wonder that too. I would wonder that too, Sir Rodimaz. When Corey was in prison, I bet all my soups he wouldn't fellowship with pedos, but now he's turning a blind eye to them over subscribers. The mob and preference is sad. Hey. Try to give my brother the opportunity to, to speak up and defend himself, but hey, sometimes silence speaks louder than a verbal offense, does it not? But anyway, yesterday I played the video, and I'm going to play it now again for context. Because David Morrow, again, was, was on Dear Walk Christian's channel, and it was dated, uh, matter of fact, May. Let's look at the date here. I'm gonna, let me read the date, and I can tell you exactly, because I got the receipt right here. Yes, the state of Christian content on, you, uh, on YouTube discussion. It was dated May 7th, 2022, so almost a year, almost a year ago. David No Morrow was on Dear Walk Christian's channel. And he gave his thoughts about public sin, deserving public rebuke and things of that nature. And he mentioned Julie Royce's name in that in that discussion. And so what I would like to do, I would like to, of course, replay the video. And in replaying the video, I'll let you, the viewer, hear exactly what David No Moral said. Check it out. Matthew 18 is very clearly for uh, somebody that sins against you personally. 
But a lot okay. of public um, Christian figures use Matthew 18 as sort of a, a trap. So if you critique them in public, they'll say, hey, why didn't you bring this to me in private? You were required by Matthew 18 to bring this to me in private. And I told Julian an email, uh, the last one I sent to her before she quit responding to me. I, I said, uh, look, public, public error gets public rebuke. Because that public error is affecting everybody that hears it. If I go to you in private and you correct it and I've won my brother, that's, that error is still out there. That error is, to, especially in the information age, that error is still affecting everybody. Yeah. So, so aside from going to that person in private and then they issue a public correction, they, they issue the rebuke on their own, which, which I'd be fine with. If they're not doing that, um, everybody else can be protected by addressing that in public. And I, I think what I told her was like a... a you know, public error gets public correction, public, you know, lies get public rebuke, some, some formula like that. But ba basically, um, I, you know, cause she complained and said, it said, Hey, you've never, you know, before you wrote your articles, you never contacted me, this, that, and the other. I said, Julie, th that wasn't a sin against me. You're, you're, you're slandering and you're, and you're creating right. falsehood and, and false beliefs publicly. This needs a public response. Right. That, that answer the question. <laughs> No, it doesn't answer the question, but I'm glad you gave that definition and that principle because I believe that. I believe that, David. Um, I think anybody believes that who holds to public sin deserving public rebuke. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. You slandered Julie Royce and you tried to have some type of bombshell story that was going to break uh, and relied on someone who is mentally unstable as your source now what i did as i thought about that video yesterday and last night i got up this morning i said i'm going to reach out to julie royce and i'm going to ask her matter of fact i'm going to send her the timestamp so that's what i did i sent julie royce a timestamp of the video of the entire link. So I didn't want, her to, I didn't want anybody to take, think, think I was taking anything out of context or anything like that. I did not. I sent the link. I said, go to this minute mark. I said, hear what David Morrow said. I said, can you confirm or clarify what this man said? And is it true what he said about you? And she said, what's your email, brother? I said, I said, let me send it to you again. So I sit there in my email and she sent me with permission, by permission, by permission, the only thing I redacted in the email was the email address. That's it. And so I asked her for permission to, to share it publicly. She gave me permission to share it publicly. And now I'm going to share it with you, the viewer, on the conversation, in the conversation that between David Morrow and Julie Royce. And you be the judge who's lying. You be the judge who doesn't have any character who needs to be exposed, okay? You, the viewer, be the judge. This is the first email. Julie says this. She says, Seiko, hi, Seiko. She says, below is the interaction I had with David Morrow in reverse order. She says, start at the bottom to read chronologically. The context is that David published falsehoods about me based on fabricated information supplied by a mentally unstable woman, Megan Stoner. Morrow even accused me publicly on his podcast of doing, quote, unethical, end quote, and, quote, immoral, end quote, things. And, of course, Julie being the beast that she is when it comes to the receipts and, the, and being a journalist, she said, I captured evidence and tweeted it. And you can go to Twitter. As a matter of fact, I already have the link in my queue, and I'm going to share it in a moment. And so she, she sent me the link and cited it. I went to it and read it. Here's the link here. And I'm going to share that momentarily, but that's the link and information right there. Okay. The next, the next message was this. She says, when David finally realized that Megan was lying to him, he reached out to me probably because he was scared at that point that I would sue him, which I could have. When I confronted him for failing to do the very basic due diligence before going public with the allegations, he came back with this crap about public allegations get public rebuttals. Of course, that's not the issue. I never said publishing something about me as a public figure wasn't fair game. Y'all see the point? You see what consistency does? Julie has never said. You would never hear Julie, people like Julie or, or me if I say something publicly 
then it's fair game. It's when you are getting information about somebody and you didn't hear it yourself and you just run with it without examining the fact the Bible says test everything and hold fast that which is true. He says, have nothing to do with unfruitful deeds of darkness, but expose them. This guy didn't do that. And so he comes back and, I, and I'm read you the whole, tra the whole transcript of the, e of the email. Okay. She said, of course, but this not, that's not the issue. I never said publishing something about me as a public figure wasn't fair game. The issue was that he published falsehoods without doing the basics required of a journalist. You, you see that? And so this is David Morrow's email to Julie Royce. Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022, almost a year ago. He writes to Julie and says, quote, Julie, I appreciate you confirming the fabricated emails. I believe they were quite possibly fake since there were multiple front, excuse me, multiple fonts and the text was not left justified. Yet Megan continued to insist that she would provide the actual email thread. So we teased an upcoming expose. I'm afraid I let my guard down believing she was an abuse survivor, which I realize is quite ironic. It was only after I smoked her out as a liar and a fraud that I was sure the actual emails were never coming. This sequence of events will be in my article. Know that I would know that I would have contacted you if you had not immediately blocked me on Twitter. You hear this lame, weak, trash excuse. I would have contacted you if you had not immediately blocked me on Twitter, but I take responsibility for suggesting I had info that was not yet confirmed. Sounds like to me, David did not do his due diligence, is it not? Mm. Let's continue on, shall we? He says, I was being lied to, but that's no excuse, and I should have seen what was happening earlier. I'm sorry for that. And I will apologize both in the article I'm publishing today and in the next video I do for what I publicly suggested. <laughs> you think he did that? Stay tuned. He says, you always can reach you always you can always reach me at this email. And at the bottom, he says, David Morrow. And so and so. Uh. She responds to him May 3rd, 2022, at the bottom. Julie Rose writes to David and says, David, you clearly had the ability to contact me, but you didn't. Being blocked on Twitter is no excuse. I also have a contact page on my website. You have published numerous articles and podcasts about me without once reaching out. That is unethical journalism. Ironic, given that you accuse me publicly of being unethical. You need to own this fully and publish your apologies on your uh, next article and uh, excuse me, apologies on your multiple social media platforms in addition to your next article and video. Yeah, you know, David, you know, like you said, public sin deserve public rebuke. So does public repentance. But anyway, maybe you and Corey hold to the same belief now. You know, telling. But anyway, let's continue on. So this is David responding back to Julie. He says, Julie, I'll do what I said I do. You also had a, had the option of responding to my rebuttals of your articles, yet you chose to block me. This is a clear indication you were not open to substantive, <laughs> substantive, substantive challenges of what you had published. Public sins get public rebuke. Do you see this? <laughs> do y'all see this? He's accusing a woman of sin. But then a minute ago, he apologizes, quote unquote. Said that he's sorry and that he's going to correct it. But you're accusing this woman of public sin. Where? But anyway, let's continue on with the foolishness. Public accusations, he says, <laughs> get public rebuttals. You hide behind journalistic technicalities. Journalistic technicalities. I'm trying to stop in mid, in mid reading of this thing because it's just comical. Let, let, let's, let me ask you a question. David, are you a journalist? Where did you go? Where, where, where did you go, David, to get, you know, uh, <laughs> where, where do you, where do you get your, did you, did you get any type of journalistic experience at all? I'm just curious. I'm just asking because apparently if you have, I would love to see your credits, your credibility and, and I would love to see it, please. And I've already told him to cam up, but he, he said, no. 
He says, you hide behind journalistic technicalities while characterizing every statement to lead your readers to your predetermined conclusion. And you have conveniently targeted cold cases. I told y'all. I told y'all. I t- I, I'm not making this stuff up. It's right there. And you have conveniently targeted cold cases that are obviously wide open to reader confusion. I believe your issue with Grace Community Church and John MacArthur is theological in nature. And you take advantage of the fact that MacArthur's longstanding position has been to not respond to these kinds of allegations, to, to these kinds of accusations, excuse me. He says, I, I'm, I owned all I'm going to own in writing and will address it the next time I'm on a podcast slash video. But if you think I'm going to back down from exposing the reprehensible tactics you employ or the, or the heretical doctrine you subscribe to, you're mistaken, he says. If you, are, if you were truly saved, you will repent of the unverifiable accusations you've made against others. We're still waiting on that. We're still waiting on the unverifiable accusations, David. Oh, I forgot. My fault, y'all. He says we can go to his protestier website and pull up his protestier articles to get that information. Protest you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me continue. <laughs> Let me continue. He says, if you were truly saved, you would repent of the unverifiable accusations you've made against others, just as I have. And you would join a biblical church where mutual submission and shepherding could happen. You have absolutely no business claiming to, to be restoring the church. Or he says, headlining. Let's, let's see what else he says here. He says, or headlining. Uh, where did I go with that one? Let me go back. Hold on. That was another one. Let me get that one back. Cause that's mine. There we go. Here we go. Um, no, 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 no. Yeah, here we go at the bottom. Or headlining. Where am I at? Is it this one? Excuse me, all my fault. Let me clear that one out. Clear this one out. Where is it at? Add it in order. That's mine with him. That's his with me. Let's see. Where are we at? Sorry about that, y'all. That's his with me again. Oh, I know what it is. Let me, let me go back up. I'm sorry. There it is. Okay. And let me close this other one out. Where is it at? Okay. Um, okay, you're right here. You have absolutely no business claiming to be uh, restoring the church or headlining Christian conferences outside the cover of a body of believers. This is not just my view. It is the view of an overwhelming number of reputable Orthodox Christian ministries. I continue to pray for your repentance, but until God brings this about, I will not stop exposing what you're doing. So notice, 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 this is called deflection. This is called deflection. And the funny thing about it is he accuses me of attacking and slandering John MacArthur in, in, in our email conversation that I will read to you in just a moment. What's going on, Mr. Rogers? Brother Anthony Rogers, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Um, so, the interesting thing about this guy, he's quick to talk about people being in sin for slandering John MacArthur, but doesn't see how he's slandering Julie Royce and others. And all we're doing is stating the facts. John MacArthur has been protecting and caping child abusers, sex offenders, wife beaters, and child molesters for almost 50 years. This is documented proof, documented evidence. Nobody has to make this stuff up. When you have a person like Han Cho leave after, after being asked to do an investigation and he comes back with his findings and tells the church, hey, y'all messed up. We need to do justice. He says, it's still, we, we still have time. There's still an opportunity to do justice. And MacArthur tells this man, forget it, and then gives this man an ultimatum. Well, you don't give men with convictions ultimatums because there's nothing to choose from. It's not a hard choice to make. And that brother, God bless him, made a choice because he knew to stay there 
will make him just as guilty as the men that are there now, not saying a word. But this man right here, David Morrill, you will see, again, in writing and on video, how these people, how these people feel about abuse survivors. Please don't take my word for it, because I have no reason to lie to any of you about anything regarding this. So let's continue. Where are we? What number is this? Uh, let's see. Is it this one? I think it is this one. Yes. This is my email to him this morning at 1122 a.m. after I spoke with Julie Royce and told her, um, you know, that I want to um, use her comment as a response because this man is clearly lying. Because that's what liars do. They lie. They lie. And so I said to David, you appeared as a guest on Dear World Christians broadcast almost a year ago. During your dialogue, you and your colleagues made statements about Julie Royce and myself that were false and still are to this present day. Since I know Jason, April, Michael, Ricky, Bobby, Ronnie, Ralph, Johnny, uh, refused to engage me in a public debate or platform, I've decided to reach out to you prior to responding to your statements on my broadcast and extend you the opportunity to publicly respond to the statements you've made publicly. As you said, public sins deserve public rebuke, right? I plan to address your statements regarding myself and Julie Royce this weekend, Lord willing. I will send you the link for you to join as a guest. He responds back today at 4.11. This afternoon, and he says, quote, he says, Seiko, I appreciate you for reaching out. I reviewed my statements on the video in question, and not only did I not reference you by name, even though many listeners knew who I, were, who I was talking about and I wasn't trying to hide it. No problem. Let's continue. I merely endorsed another's video. Hmm. So if I endorse somebody's video that is slanderous, isn't that? Never mind. Which leads me to a bigger concern, David says. If you truly believe that my inferred mention of you and your behavior via an endorsement of another creator's video amounts to statements about Julie Royce and, and you that are false, I have to question your motives. To my knowledge, you have recently quit your job to pursue being a full time YouTuber. And my concern is, <laughs> and my concern is, that this may lead to a motive to stir controversy by any means necessary for the sake of YouTube views. <laughs> Yo. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> he said, this is merely my opinion. And I'm not accusing anyone of sin. But wait a minute. Let's just do some logic for a second, y'all. <laughs> he says, not, and, and this is what we call a non sequitur. OK, this has nothing to do with the issue at hand. This is not this is a non sequitur. He says, <laughs> to my knowledge, you have recently quit your job to pursue being a full time YouTuber. And my concern is that this may lead to a motive to stir controversy by any means necessary for the sake of YouTube views. <laughs> but then once it then wants to couch it and cloak it. As this is his, this is his opinion. Okay, David. Okay, bro. All right, dude. He says, however, he continues on. However, your continual drumbeat of John MacArthur, the abuse supporter, quote unquote, remains slanderous. Ladies and gentlemen, how am I slandering him? If you put a woman out of a church because she refused, never mind. He's gonna he's gonna explain it. He, he's going to explain how he feels about women and men and gender roles in the context of abuse. Listen to me. I don't have to make this stuff up. These people make it up as they go for me. Let me continue. He says, however, your continual drumbeat of John MacArthur or J. Mack and the, the abuse supporter, quote unquote, remains slanderous as it is based on both gossip. Here we go, y'all. 
and roundly discredited hyperbolic claims from progressive so-called survivor advocates. Lord Jesus. Let me hide behind, let, let me hide behind this thing. Cause I, I, can, I can't, I can't, I cannot. I cannot. <sighs> I told y'all, I told you, did I not tell y'all these people are wicked? Hyperbolic, progressive, so-called survivor, so-called, so-called, yes, he said it. Can you, can y'all imagine, listen, 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 listen to me, y'all. Can you imagine someone in your family going through what Eileen Gray went through, what Wendy Gway went through, what, uh, uh, what's her name? The, uh, but she, she calls her name Jane now. What these women went through, these young teenagers have gone through the woman who, the young lady who had to jump out of a moving car. But according to this clown, he says that my John MacArthur, the abuse supporter remains slanderous as it is based. Notice y'all look at, listen, listen, look at these, these, these concrete indicative terms. He says, and it is based on both gossip. How would he know this? How would he know this? Let's continue on. On both gossip and roundly discredited hyperbolic claims from progressives, so-called survivor advocates, and progressive, and he has in quotes, Christians who believe contrary to scripture on gender roles. What does gender roles, what do gender roles have to do with a woman being beat and their children being sexually assaulted. Somebody help me. Because okay, maybe maybe it's me. Or is it this clown who's slower than cold syrup when it comes to what's right and wrong? I'll take the ladder for 500, Alex. And if y'all upset because I'm clowning this clown, then get off my channel. Because he's about to get all this work. This is why he won't cam up. These people are cowards. These people are cowards on the strength. On steroids. To call people like Eileen Gray and others, who we have yet to probably know until John MacArthur is off the scene, until God takes him out of here. Hyperbolic claims. I can't go any further than this right now. I need, I need, I need y'all to feel what that sounds like. And this is who Corey Miner is rocking with. Let that sink in too. Let that sink in too. This is who is in Corey Miner's ear, the mob. David No Moral. These are the people who is in this man's ear. God help him. And it is based on both gossip and roundly discredited hyperbolic claims from progressive so-called survivor advocates and progressive Christians who believe contrary to scripture on gender roles, among other things. My claims about Julie Royce from that video are simply summations of the multitude of articles and videos I have produced over the last. Oh, he's the source, y'all. See, he's the source that he's produced over the last couple years. But you are wrong in this one. But anyway. She is on record, on video, supporting women preachers, egalitarianism, which was my main comment about her. You were referenced only as the as an unnamed topic. What is even if she was an egalitarian and she's not? She believes that women can teach in the local church, but she does not support women pastors of any kind. And I will read it in her own words. I read it before, but people like David. No moral, the Bible calls them fools. They don't delight in understanding, they only delight in their own mind and what they think, what they believe. He says, if you have substantive disagreements with anything I've specifically written or said, you are clearly free to address them publicly in speech or writing, and you are certainly free to address them at this email, which I'm assuming Julie gave you. I won't be camming up 
to address non-specific concerns or allegations of sin. You said something false. Um, if I said something false, that's a lie because all wrongdoing is sin. Would it be people of truth? But see, again, slow it in cold syrup. Slow it in cold syrup. Let me continue on. I won't be coming up, he says, to address non-specific concerns or allegations of sin. You said something false for what I believe is merely trying to drum up controversy to generate YouTube views. You see that? Ladies and gentlemen, the fourth member of the Trinity is in the building. David No Morrow, himself, fourth member of the Trinity. He knows the hearts and minds of people like myself. Yeah, yeah, that's him. And so this is what I said to him. I said, I figured you wouldn't come up. Typical, LOL, shaking my head. Your actions wouldn't be, I said, your actions would be comical, if not sad, how people like you take delight in bullying women and those who aren't able to defend themselves. But when you're being challenged by men who aren't intimidated or afraid, you tuck tail and run. Tell you what, David, I'll come up on your platform then. That way you can feel safe and not be intimidated by another man virtually. As far as me quitting my job and reasons that precipitated it, I thought there were only three members of the Godhead. Since when did there become a fourth? I'm trying to see something. Lastly, regarding your callous and inconsiderate attitude toward abuse survivors like Eileen Gray, Wendy Gway, and others, just further reveals your lack of love toward fellow image bearers, which makes me wonder whether or not you're a true follower of Christ. If you believe, I continue, if you believe I'm making slanderous statements about your idol, John MacArthur, then challenge my claims in a public debate. I have enough evidence and receipts to support every claim, do you? The challenge is yours to accept or decline. Given the fact that cowards like you only thrive in echo chambers, I know you won't. And then he responds back today at 548. Which is why I had kind of started my, my live a little bit later because I was prepping and and gathering up these receipts and he kept bringing more conf, com, you know more confirmation to what I was saying and he says this he says I probably should have known better than to think you could have a mature conversation alas I would give it one more try you claim people like me quote unquote collective guilt delight in bullying women and those who aren't able to defend themselves generalized non-specific accusations with no evidence or gossip. <laughs> Oh, uh, you claim I won't respond to your challenge. Well, you won't. I will repeat myself. You have yet to issue an actual challenge. A challenge is specific. He says a challenge is specific. And so far, you've offered nothing specific. You lied about me. It's no more specific than you sinned against me. Name the sin, bro. See, see, so he thinks that saying, bro, is going to be something that I'm just going to be triggered by. But see, people like him. See, it's people like him that wouldn't survive in the hood trying to pop off and trying to be smart like that. They wouldn't make it. He continues on and says, you claim that I have a callous and inconsiderate attitude towards abuse survivors like Eileen Gray, Wendy Gray, and others. This is a heart judgment. My attitude has been and, and remains to find out the truth. Do you hear this? Do you hear this foolishness? <laughs> My first article on this stated, again, I have no interest in undermining Eileen's testimony. Or that of the kids. Do, do I need to go back to the other email? Do, do, do I need to go back to the other? Thank you. Thank you. Be great. Straight cap. Straight cap. It's amazing. See, let a fool talk. You know, tell them themselves. Just let them talk. Let them talk. They will tell on themselves. I promise you they will. <laughs> look, look at look, let, let, hold on a second hold on a second let, let me see which one is this is this this one yeah now remember what he said now first he said this first he said this right however your continual drumbeat of J Mac the subdued supporter remain slanderous as it is based on both gossip and roundly discredited hyperbolic claims from progressive so-called survivor advocates and progressive Christians. So-called. So-called.
who believe contrary to scripture. So in other words, that they, 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 they deserve to get beat. According to you. So what? My wife is, is a woman. I'm a man that gives me the right to beat the hell out of her. Just asking. Does that, does that, does that make it right? Beat the hell out of her, raise hell in the household, be a hellion, and because of a man, that's okay, right? Because she's less than me, according to the gender roles. Hmm. I'm just asking. Just asking. <laughs> So-called, y'all. So called he says i have no interest in undermining eileen's testimony you just called her so-called abuse survivor nor in devaluing the pain and trauma david's sin undoubtedly brought to their lives and and i'm just gonna let y'all hear this whole lie and cap that this guy makes him and <laughs> JD Hall. He says, I'm not close enough to, to uh, he, I'm not close enough to any of this to judge any of the most pertinent issues. So then why are you running? So then why are you attacking Julie? Anyway, let, let me, let me continue on. You might know this. If you were willing to do any investigation at all regarding the people you are accusing. <laughs> uh, frankly, he continues, your emotional challenging is embarrassing and unbecoming for someone claiming Christ. Ain't that the pot calling the kettle black? Your slander, once again, your slander against John MacArthur is very simple. You have ad nauseum accused him of supporting abusers and supporting abuse in his church, a claim I and many others have debunked at length with evidence that is widely available. <laughs> I can't. Yo, it's his stuff. You, bro, you, you a liar. Why would I believe anything you have to say? Why would anybody have to believe anything you have to say? Dave? Let me come on. Let me come on, bro. Look, look first link, Protestia. Second link, Protestia. Third link, Protestia. Fourth link, Protestia. I want to know, are you a journalist? Matter of fact, scratch that. We want to know, are you a journalist? We want to know. He continues on and says, there are several more articles demonstrating her dishonesty, the theological acts she is grinding. Mm, maybe that's where Curry got it from. Anyway, in her attempt to ingratiate herself, Notice all these motive terms. Notice. Four member of the Trinity stuff. Her attempt to ingratiate herself with the abuse survivor crowd while being an unrepentant spiritual abuser herself. <laughs> he said, let's try this. You start with one substantial point. In any of these of those articles, you have evidence to disprove again, not ad hominem smears like calling people cowards. Well, you are a coward. I got to call you what I, what I see as I see it. Cowards, bully, et cetera. Outline it right here in email and assuming it has any validity whatsoever, we can debate it publicly. No, we can do that right here. We don't need to do no more emails. No, 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 no. You need to be quick on your feet. Let's get it. He says, we'll see if your shallow character attacks and emotionalized white knighting can stand up over my 13,000 published words on just this issue. <laughs> Given how you call me a coward and a bully who idolizes John MacArthur, despite several published articles quite critical of him and GCC. I want to see an article of you calling him to repent for kicking a woman out of the church. Let's have a debate on that. On Matthew 18, let's have a debate on what church discipline is. Let's have a debate on is an abuse survivor who has suffered abuse, are they grounds for excommunication? Let's talk about that, David. You don't want this smoke. Stop it. 
Just stop it. He says again, you'd know this if you were willing to do any research at all. It should be no problem for you to focus on a single falsehood I have promoted regarding. I, I've been focusing on y'all falsehood so much. I got catalogs of y'all stuff. I mean, come on now. Really? Stop it, dude. You're embarrassing yourself. He says, should be no problem, right? I'll cam up on your channel to debate this or any other topic you want. If you can lay a glove on one point I made, I want you to come on the channel. I don't need to write it. I don't need to write anything else to you. Just come on, cam up, bring your information. And what I got to hit you with, you're not going to come out of. And that's the fact. I said, protest the articles. This is your evidence. <laughs> stop it, dude, please. Why don't you stop with all this back and forth and challenge my accusations publicly? Trust me, I have no problem challenging yours. All I need is a simple yes or no. Other than that, engaging you via email instead of face-to-face -face is another cowardly attempt people like you are notorious for. I'll await your response. In the meantime, I have a live cast. I have a live broadcast to prepare for. Thanks for the email, though. I'll be sure to mention it when I discuss your lies. Peace. Coward. Now, as promised, he did email me another one. I didn't have time. I didn't have time to to uh to state it or post it here. This was at six oh six p.m. <clears throat> uh, he said, "I wrote the articles." <laughs> okay, you do know that, right? Yeah, yeah, we know. Unfortunately, I did the research. Mm, okay. I made the claims and I came to the conclusion. I'm not, I'm not making, I'm, I'm not making this. It's, 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 it's right here. It's, it's right there. Look, I wrote the articles. You see that? I wrote the articles. You know that, right? I did the research. I made the claims and I came to the conclusions. Dismissing my claims because they are made in articles is like saying, I don't accept what written form. I don't, I don't accept what you've said because it was on YouTube and not in written form. Stupid, right? I'm willing to be believe you're smarter than that. I'm not asking for you to write an article. Just one substantive challenge here in an email, and I would gladly cam up with you. No, you need to just cam up. You need to just cam up. Just cam up. What do you have to lose? <sighs> Other than more respect that you don't really have anyway. So that's 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 so far what I wanted to share with y'all in, in that regard, okay? In that regard. Now, let me let me also share my screen because I want you to see just some other some other receipts. OK. And I'll try to remember to put these in the uh, description link below. Now, here, as you can see. Um, State of Christian content on YouTube, this is where he was. This is the date, May 7th, 2002, right? This is where he so-called tried to recant his statement. Quote, I almost got conned by an abuse survivor. No, you did. You did. Then he says, what you're about to read should serve as a warning for anyone working to navigate the current tides of hot button issues in evangelicalism, especially the emotionally charged issue of sexual abuse. About a week ago, he says, I was in touch. I was put in touch, excuse me, with a young woman who claimed to be friends with Julie Royce. The information she gave me, being cited on Royce's podcast, doing political work, being known within the so-called victim community, all checked out. You hear what he's saying? He says, she had been willing to allude to some of Julie Royce's supposed bad behavior publicly, despite the risk to her job and her relationships at our new church. I told this young woman that I'd be happy to talk with her about her experience and she responded with terrible allegations and you see the screen shots here the text there this sounded almost unbelievable david writes yet the woman followed up with more circumstantial evidence sharing screenshots of emails purporting to show her inexplicably losing the free housing julie provided for her to attend julie's restore conference the next month and you see all that there, right? So far, so good, he says. Yet the woman didn't seem interested in exposing what she knew in a published story. 
No problem. I have other things to do. A couple days later, and after some other qualifying chit chat, she messaged. You see that there. David continues. Knowing from the prior conversation what the story was about, I began working on an article. The only thing missing was the emails pr proving what she was claiming. She began the signal conversation by saying she expected, quote, full confidentiality, quote, which I agreed to. Later clarifying that I agreed she could back out of the story if after it was written, she was uncomfortable with it coming out. I made it very clear that this special consideration was contingent on her being entirely honest with me, he says. You see all that here. The email discussion proved, notice the email discussion proved that Julie was encouraging this young lady, an abuse survivor, to sling allegations online with no regard for her truthfulness. Yet, in all of my time reading Julie Roy's, this seemed brazen, almost reckless. Very different from the Julie I knew. Do stop. You don't know her. Anyway, sure. With what she had written about her relationship with Sarah, quote unquote, Recently coming under scrutiny, I knew such a blind lack of awareness was possible, but this seemed too good to be true. Julie's website is the digital embodiment of, quote, it is not the nature of the evidence, it's the seriousness of the charge, end quote. And what these emails showed fit my view that Julie uses her sources and witnesses as journalistic human shields. You, you see these accusations? So remember, he so-called apologized to Julie, right, in the email. This is supposed to be a, a this is supposed to be a post apologizing for him slandering her. But notice what he's doing. Still trying to make her look bad to make himself look good. He continues making sure any pushback, especially legal pushback against what she publishes, ultimately entangles her sources rather than herself. Yet these emails didn't pass the smell test. You think you think, David, the formatting looked odd. But sometimes mobile screens can do funny things. I informed my source that I was ready to publish on Monday and reminded her that although I had prepared a redacted anonymous version of the story, enterprising Internet sleuths would certainly figure out who she was. Obviously, Julie would know immediately. Yet, yet the story was true. I probed. She must obviously still be brave enough to go through with this. I sent her a rough draft with names. Then she later the later one uh, redacted after she claimed that she needed time to figure out how to proceed. And that if, and that, excuse me, if anything comes out now, I'm going to be fired. She said she worked for a state governor. I continued to push her, do the right thing, suspecting that all was not what it seemed. She began to malign my motivation. So you see this at this point, he says, I needed proof. She was lying and proof of what she was lying about. I had already teased the publishing of this information, and now I had witnesses who was unreliable at best or quite possibly fabricating the evidence she, pro she provided. She had broken the terms of my promise to keep things confidential. So I arranged for one of the screenshots to be released anonymously on Twitter for a small amount of time, targeted at a Twitter account I knew she would see, but few others would. Almost immediately, she began texting, calling, and messaging everyone she could, hysterically claiming that her boss, the governor, had been made aware of the tweet and was going to fire her. So you see all this. Let's just continue on down. He says, at this point, you may be wondering why I'm not revealing the identity of this con artist. Simply, it is because I believe she has serious mental and or emotional problems that need professional help. And I'm not convinced that revealing her identity here will aid the process. As far as Julie, is con Julie Royce is concerned, he says, I remain convinced. Notice, I remain convinced that her journalistic technique is reprehensible and motivated by false doctrine. What does that have to do with any of the reports that she has made? You see the, you see the deflection, the bait and switch, the gaslighting? He says, and while she clearly was in contact with the, one, with the young woman in this article, I believe one of the emails I was sent between Julie and this woman is legitimate. And nothing that I was sent demonstrates Julie had done anything wrong. <laughs> in fact, the email showing the woman's housing for the restore conference becoming unavailable seemed perfectly reasonable. I would have done the same thing. We reached out to Julie last night to confirm what we already suspected. Do y'all see this? The smoking gun emails were fake, but he put the stuff out. Yet he continues and says, yet I alluded to an expose 
near the end of a recent podcast and in social media posts, claiming I had yet unknown proof of Julie's misdeeds. I was led to believe that the actual emails were coming and was too trusting of my supposedly abuse surviving source. While I was, this, I was simply the latest target of this woman's con, it was wrong of me to get ahead of the evidence, and I have apologized for this to Julie via email. And, and so I was just showing y'all that this guy, and then you have here corrections and retractions, stories that he messed up on, that he says he had to catch the L on, right? And here you have Julie Royce showing here, this is the same email, I mean, this is the same video that I played earlier, um, and I will play it again just for the record. Uh, let's see. Um, I said at the very, um, at the very beginning that we have some more information, um, coming out about Julie Roy's, um, that I'm hoping to have, uh, out to you by, by Monday, but suffice it to say, um, it's going to blow, um, blow up the facade of Julie Roy's as an ethical investigative journalist. Uh, we have some some information about some some very unethical, I would say immoral, but certainly unethical um, things that Julie Roy's has been caught uh, saying and doing and promoting that we're going to be um, caught. Rele we're we're going to be releasing this information hopefully by Monday. So stay tuned to uh, protestia dot com for that information. Uh, I want to thank you all. So he has nothing. He he has nothing. This next article here, the Wartburg Watch twenty twenty two, Julie Roy's or J D Hall, and David Moore. Who are you going to trust? Now remember, I told you all some of the content in these videos. The slamming, the disregard, the uh, the attacks of Julie Royce and protecting John MacArthur by both of these clowns. You about to hear it? Check it out. Uh, we're going to talk about our favorite yellow journalist, Julie Royce, who has oh, uh, published a hit nasty piece, woman. another hit piece on John MacArthur. I don't know now, what her let me deal is let me with ask MacArthur. The question. I really don't. This is uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say five years old. Uh, older. Keep going. 10, 10 years old. Older. 15. Almost there. 20. There it is. 20. 20 years old. 20 years old. She's digging up something. Yep. You and I were in college 20 years ago. Yep. It's something it's something so old that when I started to do research to verify parts of the story, it was near impossible. Even with it, the internet. It is so old that when this happened, John MacArthur could still do a pull up. Yeah, I just want you to hear the the, the 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 callous, the disregard. So because it's 20 years ago, they don't believe it matters. They don't believe it matters. Nothing to them, eh, whatever. So what? 20 years? Could be 20 minutes while they care. It says, as highlighted above in the Rachel Dollander, then Holland, excuse me, quote, many abuse victims do not want to ever talk about what happened to them. Others may not talk for years for a number of complex reasons. This is why states have discarded statute of limitations laws on sexual abuse crimes. In Roy's article, she gives the reasons why she gives the reason, excuse me, she is writing this article 20 years after the abuse occurred. And we all know the story because she had waited for her children to grow, to grow up, become adults. But they're not done. They're, they're not done. They're not done. They continue on. This is an actual example of yellow journalism. And when you got to go 20 years back, uh, I'm going to call this a big fat nothing burger with a side of feminism and uh, also a, a dipping sauce of who gives a crap. Yep. And they continue on. So it looks it looks like as a result of a church discipline, marital abusive maybe situation going on with um, with Grace Community Church members that was handled by some other elders. The resulting video was um, MacArthur. Hold on, this is 
I'll just back up for a second. Yeah. This isn't even MacArthur in particular. This is the vicariousness of it. He's ha- this is other elders who handle well, this. Other situation. elders seem to be, from what I can tell from the story, the primary um doing the primary interaction with this married couple again 20 years ago. Who knows? Um and but then the video oh, is of John MacArthur behind the pulpit basically um working the church discipline process, the public, you know. Um, with the whole church poor part of the church discipline basing process. this off of what it seems to be uh what he's being told by his other elders yeah and what you, probably what he could have possibly known about what was going on basically it's it's hinds as a hindsight kind of an issue as far as i can tell because the husband who i don't think they could verify he was being abusive was convicted of actual abuse against his children and, and is now in prison he was thrown in prison and uh, 2005 and he's still there okay. um and so so she's looking back and saying well the church didn't report this as they were supposed to and they didn't believe the 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 wife although as far as i can tell she may have at least had some some for responsibility all were, were, for know? all we know there were jurors that didn't believe the wife right i mean there were enough that they threw with it with when she reported it and he was indicted and, and I mean, it was enough that he was convicted. I don't know the details of the trial. Which is like nine not. out of 12, but for all we know, there were jurors who didn't, who didn't believe. So notice, notice how they just dismissed the fact that David Gray admitted in writing, gave his confession to Carrie Hardy that was in charge of the quote unquote counseling and then also tried to dismiss these two clowns tried to dis- tried to dismiss responsibility from MacArthur who nothing happens at Grace Community Church without MacArthur's approval he stood there he facilitated it he put this woman out he refuses even now to this very day to apologize to this woman to this very day yeah they, they, exactly x these guys don't know MacArthur at all nothing exactly Exactly. That's why I said they're idiots. Straight up fools. Miss Hillary said, this is what you call hypocrisy. David Morrill is dodging the issue at hand. He claims Seiko is slandering when in fact David Morrill is covering for his idol, John MacArthur slandering Julie Royce and Seiko. Facts. But wait, you thought we, you thought we were done? Mm-mm. Here's what, here's what California law said. In California, for misdemeanor matters and felony matters, a criminal defendant has a right to a jury trial. That right is espoused in the United States Constitution under the Seventh Amendment. In order for a person to be convicted of a crime, all 12 jurors must unanimously agree on a decision of guilt. If the jury, after hearing the evidence, has 11 people in favor of guilty, but one in favor of not guilty, and that person does not change their mind, that's called a hung jury, and as such, the person will not be convicted. Oftentimes you can get a hung jury, six guilty, six not guilty, and many times those cases will not be refiled. Now, I just wanted you to hear that because, again, these are the people that are defending and caping for John MacArthur. And at the same time, these are some of the people that the mob are defending and caping for. Yeah. He continues on. And by the way, um, what she Julie Roy's is a good microcosm for what we don't want you to be as a listener to pulpit and pen. And the insults continue. You right. stinking nut job. I hope that Julie Roy's she married her husband needs to have a parapet on the roof and just, I hope he camps out out there. As a matter of fact, <laughs> let's do this, David, let's research if Julie Roy's is married. And if so, let's send him a Coleman tent for his roof. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure she's tell married. Cheyenne, yeah, tell I'm Cheyenne. Sure. Cheyenne will get the address and send him a Coleman tent in the mail. <laughs> yeah. Poor this guy. Is, like, this is just to give you a break. This is, a, you know, everybody needs to go out. Cool, we are cool worried off. about you. We're worried about your 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 menopause trauma. Yeah. <laughs> trauma. It's very it's real. Trauma. Where are all the menopause trauma counselors? That's what yeah. I want to know. Well, and and you can see by by every, every uh, fact that's, you know, delivered the way that it is in this article where i mean she says one of the pastors here ha- who is who is doing the marital counseling between this couple has an mdiv from the master seminary but no professional counseling credentials of course the assumption is if you're pointing out this fact it must be relevant even though it may it's probably not 
Hmm. Well, let's see what how do you feel about those who self cancel themselves. Mm-hmm. This is what they did with the police who were involved with uh, George Floyd as well. There was no evidence from that at all that race was a factor, but because the because the you know uh, victim, if you want to call him that was black and there were white officers. There were actually mostly multicultural officers involved, but because there was yeah, a no, white Floyd, guy involved. Floyd, well, Floyd was a victim. He victimized himself. Yeah. I mean, anytime you dope yourself up with fentanyl and kill yourself um, yep. and then and then act unruly, uh, th- 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 then yeah, yeah, he, he's a victim. He's a self-victim, just like a suicide. I hate the term suicide victim. It's a super, you're a suicide perpetrator. You're not a victim. You're, if, if I was king tomorrow, suicide, people who commit suicide wouldn't even be allowed to have a funeral. But now says the person who <laughs> who's a drug addict himself. Who went to jail and whose ministry, uh, para ministry, protesting David Morrill and them tried to cover and tried to defend. This guy on the right, J.D. Hall, is so bad, so horrible that his own church had to put him out. His wife had to bust him. That's how, that's how horrible that this man is an abuser of his wife and children. He's a druggie and tried to blame it on everybody else except himself. But you want to, you want to mock George Floyd. You're no different. Only difference is George, you, you didn't, you not, you didn't resist the police. So-called. What makes you better than, than anybody else? But this is this is the callousness. But of course, he would feel this way about suicide because you know he was responsible for the for the suicide of Brandon Cannon. Yeah. Braxton, excuse me, Braxton Cannon. But we'll we'll continue on in just a minute. Uh one more. Yeah, but I did find it funny that Julie Roy's had, and I don't know if you saw this while you were fighting your fights recently she had none other than kyle j howard on a podcast to talk about oh, racial I trauma i didn't i didn't catch the podcast but i caught that that he was uh, on her program to so talk funny. about racial trauma it was hilarious yeah did you did you listen to the podcast i listened to it as long i but i couldn't stop laughing and so i just turned it off <laughs> he's he's He's, he's like a... Uh, and there's not a single one of his stories. Think about it this way. I have never heard one of his stories of racial trauma that have even come close to the realm of substantiated. Not even close. It is all anecdotal. There is no evidence for any of it. And this is the woman who's given credence to a 20-year-old controversy at Grace Community Church. Right. I mean, she, I don't think she really understands among logical thinking evangelicals that do any sort of research at all how much that damages her credibility she's going to have kyle j howard on to talk about racial trauma before she goes after john MacArthur. now notice these two guys mock the speech impediment of another man okay don't don't forget that don't forget that they they're, they they mock listen i i don't cut for kyle j howard too much, but I'm not gonna mock how he talks, uh, especially in the, in the context of dealing with abuse survivors and abuse victims. These two clowns don't care. I mean, they just don't. It's obvious. Now, this guy on the right, J.D. Hall, uh, he should have been removed from being a pastor ever since he was responsible for the suicide of this young man, Braxton Canner. This will this will always live in infamy with him. Southern Baptist pastor, blogger, radio host, is talking about him has been accused accused of cyberbullying in the weeks since the death of, by a suicide by suicide of a Texas teenager. Said in a lengthy confession read to his church on Sunday, the controversy has left him crushed and broken. You're right. You would think he would have stopped doing this, right? Nope. On July second. Hall wondered on Twitter why Canner's 15-year-old son Braxton was posting makeout pics and profanity on social media. Four weeks later, according to an online medical examiner's report, Braxton Canner ended his own life in an upstairs bedroom of his home in Alito, Texas at 6.54 p.m. on, Ju- on July 29th. 
Hall initially defended the original post in a brief exchange of tweets with the teenager saying it was relevant to the father's ability to lead in his own home. Later, Hall said he regretted pointing out the teen's online behavior, calling it a distraction and admitting that he should have contacted Canner privately. But his, this guy says people who, who self delete themselves shouldn't get a funeral. What believer you know talks like that? I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. If you have not watched this video, I would encourage you to watch it. Um, this is this is the Jordan Hall story. Service Christie. He did an excellent job an excellent job on exposing J.D. Hall. Here's, here's a description of the, of the notes. Quote, Jordan Hall, founder of Protestia and Pulpit and Pen, was recently found to be disqualified from ministry by his church for purported Xanax abuse. While it's true that he is a Xanax addict and has been lying about it for a long time, they deliberately withheld this mysterious incident that transpired on June 5th, 2022 which was the real reason for his disqualification it is so much worse than what you were told the corruption is real the cover-up is expected and the abuse is absolutely disgusting and he has the full story at the bottom here's the full story and, and what they are hiding to protect jordan and themselves while falsely hiding behind matthew 18 and a fear of gossip fellowship baptist church in sydney justin peters chris roseboro Phil Johnson and all who have aided and abetted Jordan Hall over the years and have remained silent now share in his shocking sin. I have warned of this madman since 2018 and many others tried warning before me. As predicted, Jordan Hall has been his own undoing. But, but he says, not before stumbling many. The righteous judgment of the Lord has fallen on this wolf who has plagued the church with lies and has plagued his own family with untold hardship. May God be with his wife and children in this time. Police reports included. Yeah, police reports. You know, same kind of police reports and, and documented evidence that Eileen Gray and them have, but these two clowns talk about, oh, 20 years ago, they're just 20 years ago. See, demons, wicked men, no good, trash, garbage. And he has the links here. I would encourage you, if you had not, if you have not watched this, I would encourage you to watch it. It is worth your time. Yes, it is five hours long, but the other one, I would highly recommend the death of the sermon. This is eight hours and 26 minutes long. You may have to watch it in, in parts. That's fine. I did. And I was, I was deeply, uh, I was deeply uh, appreciative of what this man, this brother did. He says, uh, let's see. Let's read the notes a little bit here. The death of the sermon. This is August of 2022. The death of the sermon often comes through those who profess to exercise where favoritism and partiality exist, the sermon necessarily dies. In God's providence and arguably in his judgment upon them and their followers, if they continue for the hypocrisy, the reform camp, and many who are connected to John MacArthur have become the unofficial spokesman for all things discernment. Like those like Justin Peters, Phil Johnson of Grace to You, Todd Friel of Wretched Radio, Chris Roseborough of Fighting for the Faith, the Bible Thumping Wingnut, and others have formed a network of deceit whereby they speak of discerning truth from error while actively dealing death blows to discernment for the sake of self-preservation and self-advancement. They are storing up judgment for themselves, and if you do not depart their company, even virtually, you will find yourself corrupted by their bad company and receiving of their plagues as well. After their friend and ministry partner, J.D. Hall, was recently and unsurprisingly found to be a drug addict, embezzler, yeah, that means thief, he's a thief too, yeah, he's a thief. Wife beater. Yeah, he was that too. And child abuser. Yep, that too. This is who this is who David No Moral kicks with. Yeah, this one. This guy. 
J.D. Hall has since been kicked out of the church he once deceived due to his failure to repent of his abuses and deceptions. He remains defiant in the face of some of the worst sins imaginable. None of these men have addressed any of these updates. While this affords a clear window into their corruption, it is actually much deeper as I have been warning for quite some time. Service says, when their friends commit atrocious and gut-wrenching evil, they look the other way, unless they are forced to do some kind of damage control for PR reasons. Yet, they spend their time critiquing those who aren't their friends as though they were modern-day prophets. In a sense, they are modern-day prophets, modern-day false prophets. Every false prophet thinks he is a true prophet and purports to be so. Jesus said of them, you will know them by their fruits, and so on. These men habitually bear wicked and rotten fruit and call it good while reveling or reviling those who hold them to account for their corruptions. They join the ranks of their spiritual fathers, men like Ahab or the Pharisees in Matthew 23, who shut up the kingdom of heaven against men in the name of God, making their converts twice as much the sons of hell as themselves. And these are in 11 part videos here. I, again, I would encourage you to, to watch it, to watch it all, all of it in its entirety. You, 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 you will not be disappointed. You will not. Let me give you a sample of it. This is, uh, about David, no moral. Check it now, out. Now, now the co-publisher of Pro Protestia, um, the man who takes pictures of people's homes and sends anonymous letters, uh, went on a rampage apparently on Twitter. Did y'all hear what he said? He's talking about David No Moral. He doxed a woman, you know, kind of like what Phil Johnson did. Doxed the woman, took a picture of their home, and, and and publicized it. Let's go back. He needed an editor, uh, right? His uh, now now the co-publisher of Pro Protestia. Um, the man who takes pictures of people's homes and sends anonymous letters, uh, went on a rampage apparently on Twitter, um, after the police investigation was published, uh, by myself and, and some others, he was trying to intimidate people into silence. Here's what he, here's what he, he go into bat for his friend, the wife beater and child abuser, um, drug addict, et cetera, et cetera. How many things do we want to list here? Releasing investigation investigation documents to the public is generally illegal without a court order. Okay. It makes sense. Otherwise, a person... It doesn't make sense, actually, because it's stupid and it's wrong. Otherwise, a person could simply make a false report to the police and the investigation document could be spread around to smear the accused. Ah, so he's... Um, implying that perhaps Jordan Hall's wife, Mandy, is a liar. The woman who got beat, now now he's saying maybe she's lying about him. Nice, nice, David. Do, do y'all hear this? I, I, this is how wicked these people are. These people are wicked. They're, they're, words fail, words fail me to, to, to just describe how trash and how weak these people are. And yet, Nobody wants to talk about it. These, these, these people. They don't want to hold MacArthur accountable because they're just as guilty as he is. In case the obvious violation of privacy and immorality of this kind of, uh, of this kind of thing isn't obvious, allow me to demonstrate this from Montana law. Well, buckle up for a, for a law lecture. Montana Code 44-5-103 defines confidential criminal justice information to include criminal... Invest investigative information. Okay. An initial offense support defined, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So he's, he's, he just goes on to claim, this is wrong. This is confidential uh, information. Furthermore, anyone in possession of confidential criminal justice invest information is, according to Montana 44-5-303, assumes equal responsibility for the security of the information, making everyone who shares it equally legally liable, says David Morrill. I hope it makes sense why I would warn people privately that what they were doing is was illegal. I suspect a person harmed by this kind of illegal disclosure might very well be preparing a lawsuit against every person who spread such confidential information. As I've said repeatedly, I do not know what happened two states away, but such a flagrant violation of the biblical spirit of innocent until proven guilty, 
that's laughable coming from them, via this kind of smear is both sinful and illegal. Uh, This woman, Amy Smith, says, David Morrill sent me a direct message last night trying to intimidate me about J.D. Hall and his recent police reports in Montana. Initial police reports are public record. (laughs) Here's what he sent to her. I noticed uh, that you claimed J.D. Hall was charged and shared information... uh, shared images of Sydney PD confidential investigation documents, which is a lie. They're not confidential. Uh, wanted to uh, let you know that he has not been charged. That may be true. Um, I can't speak for what she wrote, but he says if she said he'd been charged, I guess that wasn't ac- technically accurate. Wanted to let you know that he has not been charged, and based on insider info, I believe it's unlikely he will be. Oh, now he's got insider info. Beyond that, dissemination of the documents you shared is actually a crime in the state of Montana. Again, that's what happens when you get a law degree at Toys R Us, apparently. (laughs) I'm afraid you're wrong about the police investigation documents being public record. I'll fill in the details in an upcoming article. Can't wait to read it, David. But I resent being accused of trying to intimidate you, Amy. I was merely informing you privately instead of publicly because I thought we were friends. Well, I think David Morrill's got his hat on too tight. Um, He might want to tell the chief of police that he broke the law. Get him. Again, I read this in the beginning. Here it is again. Get him. Public records request from the chief of police of Montana. It is the Sydney. It is the policy of the Sydney Police Department to provide public access to records in a manner that is consistent with the Montana Constitution and public records laws. Montana Code annotated uh, defines both public criminal justice information and confidential criminal justice information. 44-5-103, a section David Morrill has read but failed to understand, apparently. Definitions. MCA. The attached information is what this agency has determined to be public criminal justice information. Case closed, buddy. Any requested information that was not included in the following attachments was determined to be confidential criminal justice information and cannot be released by this agency. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Respectfully, Mark E. Kraft, Chief of Police. So David Morrill apparently contending that the Chief of Police doesn't know the law in Montana and broke the law also he could protect his abusive friend Jordan Hall. Some of the responses to David Morrill. This dude is scary and a little crazy. Glad you called him out on his threats. Yes, he is scary and a little crazy. Uh, That dude is a major yikes, says another commenter. This person says, I almost feel like JD is in the background talking to Protestia about our posts and telling him how to respond. You think? Uh, According to Insider Info, suddenly David Morrill has Insider Info. Um, another person, Christine Pack, says J.D. and David Morrill run the Protestia site together. So, yeah, that's what's going on. Just wanted, you to, just wanted to play a portion of that. You all can go to the website. I'll put the link in the description below. Lord willing, tonight, uh, if not no, no later than in the morning, depending on what time I finish here. But um, you can go to the website, go over to his channel, Death of Discernment, Service Christie, the Jordan Hall story. Service Christie, you haven't seen it. I would encourage you to watch it in its entirety. You may have to watch it in segments, but watch it nonetheless. Okay. Now, let me say this. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping he's okay. I need to, I need to check and, and follow up on him and see if I can uh, catch up with him. Um. Yeah, I, I don't I don't pay attention to people like Montana Viking. He's a clown. He, he he's a clown. Uh, and people like them, they they don't they don't have anything. That's why they ever never came up. They they none of them, none of them. Um. <clears throat> so anyway, I um. I I give it to him in just a minute, if someone else has has not yet. Um. Because this also affects the gospel and how people see Christianity. When we have this type of wickedness, this type of sin, this type of cover-up, this mindset that it, it happened 20 years ago, and, 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 and since it happened 20 years ago, then it, it doesn't matter um, because it was in the past. Well, 
I definitely do believe the Bible has a lot to say against that. A whole lot to say against that. Let's look at the scriptures, shall we? Genesis chapter 49. Jacob is about to about to die, but he summons, he calls his sons to the, to him to let them know, to prophesy to them of what is going to happen to them. He's going to talk about their life, things that they've done, and how it's going to affect them going forward. This is uh this is the issue, okay? Um, well, let me just stop for a second. Give me a minute. Um, is MB, is MB, MB is 07 here? If he's here, let me, let me get him to acknowledge his presence here in the chat. MB, are you here? Is MB in the chat? If MB is in the chat, then we can we can uh I will present the the message to him right now. So MB, let me let me ask you a question. What brings you here? Do you believe what brings you here is because God in his sovereign providence wanted you to hear the truth and that he uses the means like this channel and others uh that present the truth and present the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in a way that if your heart is open and if you are teachable and receptive to the, to the message and you turn from your sin and repent, you can be saved. Number one, recognizing that you have violated the law of a thrice holy God. There's nothing that you could do even on your best day to be pleasing to God. Why? Because all of us born of Adam have a sin nature. All of us born of Adam are separated from God. All of us born from Adam and born in Adam have a relationship with God that is not that is not positive. It is a negative relationship. In other words, the wrath of God abides on those who do not know him. We are dead in our trespasses and sins. Ephesians 2 tells us we are dead in our trespasses and sins. Romans tells us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 6 says the, the Romans 6 says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what we have done, we have earned the wages whereby we can spend eternity in hell if we do not repent. If God has given you the opportunity to hear this message today, the writer of Hebrews says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. And the message is this, that Christ came to this earth. He lived a perfect and sinless life. He fulfilled every righteous requirement that God demanded in his own body. Because man, apart from Christ's saving work, could never do it. We were, we were never born perfect. We're imperfect. We are born in sin. We love sin. That's why we always do what, the, the, what is the strongest pull in our nature is to sin. But when you become a Christian, when the spirit of God comes into the soul and he changes your nature, you have a new heart. You have new affections. You see things differently. It doesn't mean that you're not going to, you're not going to sin, but it does mean when you and I do sin, we know that we have an advocate, Jesus Christ. Those who are not Christians, those who are not saved, cannot have and cannot call upon Jesus to be on their behalf or to speak on their behalf. Why? Because they have not placed their faith and trust in Christ. But you, if you do that tonight, if you place your faith and trust in Christ, then you can be saved. You will be saved. It is a promise. In fact, let's look at some scriptures in just a second. We're going to look at Romans 10. And we're going to start in verse, in verse, verse 9, verse 8, excuse me. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart. That is the word of faith in which we are preaching. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart 
that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not might be saved. You will be saved. For with the heart is where it begins, MB. For with the heart, a person believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth, he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call upon him. For, verse 13, for whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That is the word of God. That is the gospel message. If you believe this and you don't, and you don't doubt what God has said in his word, he says you will be saved. It's not based on a feeling. It's not based on how many bumps you have going up and down your, 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 your arm or your, you know, how many chills you have running up and down your spine. No, no. You can know today. You can know today that you belong to Christ if you believe what he has done on your behalf. It sounds simple, but it is so profound. It's simple to understand it if God has opened your eyes. But it is profound once you have opened your eyes and you realize what Christ has done and what God did by sending his son and not only sending his son, but now sealing you with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter one. Verse three, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, that is in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight. He said, the Bible says, he made known to us the mystery of his will, According to his kind intention, which he purposed in him with a view to the administration suitable to the fullness of the times, that is the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth. In him also we have obtained inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose to his purpose, excuse me. Who works all things after the counsel of his will. To the end that we who were the first to hope in Christ would be to the praise of his glory. Note verse 13. <clears throat> Notice verse 13. In him, you, that is you, MB, if you believe this, you, after listening to the message of the truth, this message of the truth is what I just presented to you and others who may listen to watch this. You, after listening to the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with the view of the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. That is what God did. <clears throat> that is what God has done for every one of us who has placed our faith and trust in Christ. And I hope he has, I hope he has done that with you. If you have truly placed your faith and trust in Christ, then you are in the family of God. And let me just say this to you. Uh, the Bible says that there is rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents. Just one. Don't even need a lot. Just one. That, that means that salvation is an individual thing. There are many being saved, 
But the Bible says heaven rejoices. The angels rejoice. They rejoice over one sinner who repents. Let me let me read to you Luke 15 in verse 7. He talks about the lost coin, the, the, the lost sheep, right? Notice, he says, What man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open pasture and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. Notice, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Verse 7, I tell you, in the same way, there will be more joy. There will be joy in heaven over one, over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. It's always the one. It's always the one. So, so MB, if you have placed your faith and trust in Christ, I pray that you have. Then, brother, uh, I welcome you to the family. I'm pretty sure others will and have not have already welcomed you as well, too. And people are telling me to scroll up in the chat. So let me let me do that. Is this the message? I want I want to place my trust in Jesus Christ and confess and believe he died for me. And that's all that matters. And that's and that's what and that's it. That is it. If Christ, if Christ has 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 saved you, you are saved. You are saved. And there's a transfer that have, that have taken place. You don't even know it. But in the spirit, in the spirit realm, there was a transfer that took place. You have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son, Colossians says. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what it is all about. Oh, no, nah, brother, we su we supposed to. <laughs> we supposed to. Listen, y'all y'all do understand. Um, y'all do understand that angels, they're rejoicing, but they don't know what salvation, the salvation experience looks like. They don't know. The writer Hebrews said they, that they look, they intently look at, I mean, they, they don't know. I mean, they see people being saved. Yeah, they're rejoicing, but they don't know what it's like to be redeemed. They don't know what it's like to be regenerated. The text says the angels long to look into this process, into this thing called salvation, redemption, conversion, justification, sanctification. Yes, David Morrow, this is the purpose of <laughs> Pastor Seiko's channel, not grifting. Yeah. But it is what it is. And now, yeah, and now what you need, you need a Bible. You can you can, see, you can download the Bible app. You can do all that. So let's 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 equip him with the resources online to get him the information that he needs. Um, and and then also, um, if you can, email me so we can probably try, try to help connect you to a local fellowship. So you can so you can get connected to a local fellowship. You don't want, you don't want to get just get saved and, and not be and not get sanctified, get clean, staying clean, staying accountable, being with other people of like-minded faith. It's like a new baby. Now you need to be, you know, you get, need to get careful. You need to get the milk. Then you get the milk of the word and then ultimately and gradually progress to the meat. But right now you need to be fed on some milk. Yes. And get one, get a real one to hold in your hand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yes, it is a process, sis. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Yeah, I I exactly. No no one. No one. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That's what my Bible says. I don't know about nobody else's Bible. Mine says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Um So let me all ask, let me let me ask you all this. Uh, are we are we done with this with this 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 David Morrow thing? Are we good? Cause I, I, you know, I got some more, but I can, I can shut it down off of that. I, but I can just tell you, Genesis forty nine, is it was a day of reckoning and a day of accountability for the things that the sons of of, of Israel did, the twelve, the twelve sons of Israel, or not twelve, because well, yeah, twelve sons of Israel, what they did, and their life. Did we also talk about the judgment seat of Christ? 
the judgment seat of Christ for those who think, oh, this, this, that, that happened years ago. Yeah, we all going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for what we've done. So let no one fool you. David Morrill, J.D. Hall, none of these people. They just show you that they don't take sin seriously. What they take seriously are their own image and protecting and idolizing those that they worship. That's what they take seriously. But I want to read one, one section, then I'll, I'll wrap this up, because I want to make sure this is on record. And as promised, I need to read this, uh, this, this uh, chapter in Julie Royce's book, because she has been accused of being an egalitarian, and she is not. She is not. We can differ on the roles of men and women in the church, but she does not embrace egalitarianism. And for people to say that is a lie. And David Moore is a liar. So I want, I want to just read this section and then we'll wrap it up. But I want to make sure this is on record. This is uh, from her book, uh, Redeeming the Feminine Soul. You see the title at the very top, Redeeming the Feminine Soul. And in, her, in chapter three, this is in chapter three of her book, she writes, quote, a sacramental understanding of marriage and family has profound implications for sex roles in the church. Again, instead of focusing on what men and women can and can't do, we need to discern the answer to the larger question. Why did God ordain different roles in the church for different genders? You all see this? An egalitarian don't talk like that. Why did God ordain different roles in the church for different genders? As I mentioned earlier, she says, complementarians historically have based distinctions in men's and women's roles in the created order. As Genesis clearly explains, God created man first and then the woman. This order appears significant because it is reiterated in the New Testament as a basis for sex roles. For example, in 1 Corinthians 11, 7 through 8, the Apostle Paul instructs women to cover their heads while prophesying or praying, but not men, because man was not made from woman, but woman from man. Again, in 1 Timothy 2, 12 to 14, Paul states that women should not exercise authority over a man because Adam was formed first, then Eve. However, complementarians rarely mention men's and women's distinct symbolic functions as a rationale for sex roles in the church. This symbolism, though, is implicit in the New Testament text, namely that the church is a family with both mothers and fathers. In 1 Timothy 3, 2, for example, Paul says that an overseer in the church should be the husband of one wife. Then he adds, he must manage his own household well. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? Clearly, Paul regarded overseers as fathers and saw consistency between a father's leadership in the home and a spiritual father's leadership role in the church, which is God's family. Paul assumed this paternal role himself, referring to the Corinthian believers as, quote, his beloved children, end quote, and writing, I became your father, in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So it seems that our symbolically important roles in the home have corollaries in the church. Do y'all see this? Are, are y'all listening to me? Are, are we are we are we still tracking together in the chat? I want to make sure everybody is seeing this because this is the accusation. This is the accusation. Oh, she's an egalitarian. Well, let's let's see. Because so far, doesn't sound like it. And I've talked to her personally to know that's not true. But she continues. Just as men, uh-oh, just as men should serve as fathers in the home, men should serve as overseers in the church. We can, we can, we can, we can, let me run it back again. Just as men should serve as fathers in the home, should we? just as men should serve as fathers in the home, should we? Just as men should serve as fathers in the home, men should serve as overseers in the church. This isn't because, Julie says, women can't preach, teach, or lead, or are deficient in some way. It's because men and women have different and equally 
critical symbolic roles. Men are the fathers of the church. Women are the mothers. Both are necessary. Both are God ordained. Neither is interchangeable. If you like this video, please share this video. Please share this video. Please like, subscribe, share. Hit the notification bell. Please. Let people know about this channel. I would really appreciate it. Let people know about let people know about the content that you have heard today. What we do over here at the BCV channel. Please, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, not trying to grift. But if you'd like to support this ministry finance, you can do so by clicking the links in what is tickered across the screen by utilizing the resource and donation information below through Venmo, Cash App, or Zelle. This is what helps us to continue with our ministry, continue to take care of the responsibilities and the costs that incur here. As since we are full-time content creators, that is a job. Contrary to what David Morrow says, I create content. That is a work. The labor is worthy of his wages. That's what the Bible says. If I'm sown spiritual things to you, should I not receive physical or carnal things or material blessings from you? It is a give and receive. It is a win-win for all of us. So if you would like to support the ministry, nobody's twisting your arm, but if you'd like to support the ministry financially, you can do so by clicking the donation links below as well. Again, Body Lifers, you can do that as well by allowing and making this ministry a part of your regular contributing and regular support for this channel and for the Love, Life, and Marriage channel as well too. BCV merchandise are below at the bottom of the video and also tickered across the screen. You can support the ministry as well by supporting and purchasing our uh, merchandise. It helps us as well to continue on with the ministry that God has given for me to do. We praise God for what he has done tonight. I know I do. And Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that we pray that Brother MB, his salvation is made secure. His calling and election of you has been made secure as well. We pray, Father, for those who may watch this video, those who may hear what has been said. We know that the gospel is not chained, that the gospel is able to save those, whether they're in a church building or whether they're watching a message that is being streamed across the Internet. We ask and pray, Lord, that your will will be done in the affairs and the lives of your people. We pray, Father, for other content creators who are striving to produce and to make godly content for the furtherance of your kingdom and for the edification of souls that have been called to you. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will bless those of us uh, who have ministries such as this, that we will not grow weary and well-doing, but we will weep if we do not faint. We also pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to use those who have a heart and a mind to support people through the prayers, through encouragement, through tangible expressions of love and gifts as well. We know that is how the body of Christ comes together to help one another. We pray, Father, for those who may be sick, those who need are in need of healing, those who need of, of encouragement. We ask and pray, Lord, that you would bring someone in their lives as well to be the hands, the feet, the mouth, the shoulder, and, Father, just the presence of others to be able to come alongside and to support us. We thank you, Father. We thank you for what body life truly means. That body life is not just a cliche, but it is a culture because you've called us into one body, but many members. And so, Lord, we thank you. Bless our night, the remaining portion of our night. Allow us to sleep well. Allow us to rise by your grace and by your power and by your mercy that we will be able, Lord, to fulfill the mission and the purpose you have called us to do as ambassadors. We pray and ask this in, my, in Jesus' mighty name and all for his sake. Amen. All right. So that is my time. Thank you all so much for yours. Thank you, Facebook family. I appreciate you all. Thank you, moderators. Thank you for holding it down uh, as well. Uh, we do appreciate it. And it is a, um, a blessing to be able to be your host and your speaker for tonight. So you all have a great uh, and blessed uh, weekend. And y'all know the drill. Whatever you do, do all to glory and honor of God. God bless. Thank you for sharing this night. God bless you. Good night.